much. <laughs> well, uh, I, I think uh, one of the most amazing things with the bridge, besides the fact you're doing two remakes at the same time, uh, is that it, it, it all started as a business initiative. It, it was set out to make a crime, Swedish crime series work on Denmark TV, and we usually feel really uncomfortable in drama when it comes to thinking, planning a success. Uh, but it turned out to be pure literature and pure art, and, and, um, and, and as so, it became something much bigger and, and became universal. So we're going to talk a bit about planning a success and a bit how to make a remake, and I, I want to invite... Uh, we'll spend less than half an hour, half an hour, with uh, three of the most brilliant uh, minds in the drama field that, with their choices, uh, recently changing um, the face of drama in many aspects. So I want to invite Ode Davidov. And Gidi Raff. And just, uh, well, no need to introduce, but I'll say, Gidi, you achieved something that Dexter and Six Feet Thunder and, and, and uh, so many others haven't achieved with the prize for best, uh, the Emmy for best drama. Uh, but your life didn't start with uh, Homeland and Khatufim, right? You uh, directed two films in uh, Los Angeles, and you even wrote a very successful, funny book in Israel. And uh, Ode Davidov, in case any of the foreigners don't know, you're the most fruitful uh, director, creator who combines uh, films and, and TV here and uh, comedies and thrillers. And each of your choices was a breakthrough in, in this genre in Israel. And uh, this year, your uh, amazing uh, Timo Dashan was brought to NBC for, for a remake. And uh, it wasn't picked out eventually, but I'm sure it will have uh, other rounds. So I, I want to start by asking the three of you uh, do you plan success, and um, can, you, can you plan success? And, and be honest, these days when you try to draw a story, do you seek only for those who have universal, the stories that have un universal appeal? Um, hi. I don't think you plan success at all. I think that's um, a menu to fail. I think you think about the characters and the world of the story you want to tell, and um, you make it as personal as possible for you, and that's the way um, to tell a story. I think if you think of how the audience is going to respond, or, or if you think of Emmys or Golden Globes, um, th that's not the way to tell a story. Um, the universal side of it, do you, do you seek for the conflict I, that has... Again, I think, I think one of the reasons um, Khatufim was successful and one of the reasons Homeland was successful is was based on a show that was actually very local. And the universal themes in, in Khatufim and um, in The Bridge and Timur Otashan also um, come from the fact that it's a very local show and a very personal one. So as, as much provincial you are, the more universal you are. Well, I think there's more truth in, in, in writing what you know and, and not trying to compete with, with something you don't. And um, our advantage is that we can tell our stories from the places we come from. But do you see yourself uh, getting a mission by a businessman telling you, well, we need to bring money from Denmark, bring me a story? And, and uh, yeah. I think, I think that uh, the, the main issue is the characters. If they're interesting, so it can be interesting everywhere. And I think when you do, when you do, when you sell your, what I felt in Pillars of Smoke, that I, I didn't do it alone. I do it with Noah Stallman. He created it uh, with me, and also with Hart and Merit. Um, we worked on it together for a lot of years. We started it before, uh, like ten years ago, before there was uh, what's the name of the. It was before uh, it was we started it before lost so <laughs> it is, What's the name of that small it took show? us a lot of years so I think the most important thing in the project was the was the relationship between the two main characters like in the bridge and what I didn't see in the in the um, in the American version version is that. So I think the most We'll talk the in, most a, in a moment in, uh, thing, about what went yeah. wrong with the American version. But Lars, do you want to say something about the uh, planning a success issue? No, I, I, I honestly don't. I don't think we plan for success at this stage. But the thing is that 
as soon as this idea starts to fly, especially when it flies around the broadcasters or on the market and you start financing, there's so many people from Los Angeles and, and the rest of the world with their ear way out. So they will, there's a lot of people that will identify. Yeah, but there's success. some one thing that is common with almost all the remakes we're seeing, and uh, this is the fact that they all have one-liner, very sharp one-liner, high concept they, that hasn't been done um, recently or ever, and they all have very sharp five first minutes. And it, the question is, is that, I mean, is, is, is that the basic tip you can give for? I think the structure. I think the. There's so much material out there, so if you don't catch the interest of the Hollywood guys within 10 minutes, you're lost. Or if you're not lost. But I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> so it's sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's more, more than the writing is important. The one-liner, the trick that, that stands be behind this one-liner is important, right? I think the one-liner is not interesting at all because no one will see it if it, it won't be good characters in it or, or we, we, we now I'm working in uh, Herzliya uh, studios and every day we're getting a, a lot of one-liners but to do it to do it good to do it so people can see it uh, that's the most the characters can you want to add something well I think one of the things that us Israeli creators um, I'm sure you, you you felt that too um I don't think it's the one-liner I think one of the things when we talk to American creators and American producers, um, they talk about a franchise, which is a word we don't really talk about because we can live with one season or two seasons. And even if we have a second season, it's two or three years after the first season. But in America, it doesn't work that way. So the, the franchise, the hook of the show, the engine of the show is critical. And I think that's why they talk about it. Now, when, when we talk to uh, your friends at Fox, uh, they all say that uh, they have a lot of really good writers, uh, but lack of ideas, and they felt like Israeli, the Israeli market has a, a lack of, of writers, but really great ideas. Well, I think um, what they find in the Israeli market, and because we work with such tiny um, budgets because of the market size, is we, and we compete with, with the American shows because they're on television, so they find very creative ideas, and um, they find brave stories or, or something that... Well, we have to, um, yeah, um, and the audience has to be, um, you know, we're competing for the same audience here, so we have to be, we find creative ways to tell a story either very cheaply or we play with the format like in Betty Pool, and, and they find, I think, a creative hub here. So, and, uh, Oda, can you tell us a bit about your adventures in L.A. and, and what went wrong, because maybe the, the basic mistake was taking something with the DNA of a cable show and selling it to to a network, to NBC? Yeah, I think, um, first of all, it, w it was fun because we had uh, first class and all the best hotels and lim limousines wait for you. But it, it was, uh, it's like if you do the bridge without the, the main characters, the, without the main character with Asperger, so you have nothing there. If you do, and, and, that, and, and that, that's the problem because what what they what what was happening? I think they they saw the they, they saw pillars of smoke. They lo they loved it, and then they, then they do the one liner. That's that's what that's what happened. The character was very different. We we talked about a relationship between a relation guy from the north to a lady from Tel Aviv, and and. And it didn't happen in the, in the American version. So they used the, the one-liner, they took the whole 10 chapters that we made and then the, to have more uh, suspense, they put it all in one chapter. But were you involved? I mean, could you, were uh, they no, listening to you? I was like, uh, we were involved, but not really, not really. We were, we were doing the next season here in yeah. Israel and uh, and we, we were like uh, visitors there. So, of course, w when you have a good series that works here, you probably get a lot of phone calls and, and uh, option deals and everything. But uh, this is a tricky thing because you have something like out of 50 Britain pilots, only 15 will be shot and then three will go on air and one will survive. So what is the m most important thing? I mean, is it choosing the American partner? How do you choose? Do you uh, demand to be involved in the writing process? 
That's I nice. Think, I think that's uh, a, probably the most crucial moment in all the pro remake process because you can end up in this development hell situation. A lot of there's so many scouts out there, and they're willing to pay uh, low options and possible. Uh, I mean, it's uh, you could just get stuck. So I think. It's so important, that's what I mean, that's the most important planning for success. You have to know that there's right, that the right right is backing it and, and look at the titles really clear. Well, I think that's, that's the key ingredient. I don't think there's a recipe for success, but the key ingredient, definitely in the case of Khatoufim and Homeland, was our um, partners. Starting with um, Avinir and through Rick Rosen, Alex and Howard, um, and I think when you find the right collaborators, then it's also easier for a, for a creator to let go a little bit of his creation. Um, yeah. Can I just add one thing that I'm really surprised for, but with, because I'm in the film business and TV business as well, and I'm, I'm so fascinated by the respect for showrunners in, in, the, in Hollywood. It's so much higher than I ever thought, and, and, and they're really valuable and respected, and, and they're so fantastic. So, And I think that... Uh, we were talking about this this morning that it's uh, it's like do or die for an American studio that you have one of the five names or ten names whatever is around. But so so uh, but we'll talk about uh, the process because it's really different. It's like something in a different profession. But uh, you are actually you're, you are an American in many aspects because you, you lived there for nine years. You worked uh, for the studios as even as a lector. But can a foreigner be involved in the writing room? Can he write an episode? Does he understand the, the way of thinking, or should he just uh, be happy with the executive producer title? And well, I think it depends on, on the creator. Some creators can write, some can't. Um, and I think one of the things that um, was instrumental in my process was Avi from the very first moment when um, I went to that meeting with Rick and with Howard and Alex, he said to me, you don't have to sell the show to these people if you don't want to. And I think that's a huge freedom that creators have to remember. Um, and I write in English, so I wanted to be part of the writing. And I think it's fine if a creator or a writer that writes in Hebrew um, gives his idea, but doesn't do the writing. I, so I don't think there is any rules. So l let's talk about what each of you took from this process, because it, it is a totally different process. That we block shoot the whole thing, the whole episode, uh, and, and we have, uh, usually you write alone, you direct alone, you have a partner writer, but it's not the writing room of, of eight people. Uh, the whole process is different. We don't have really showrunners. So what did you, what can we l learn from uh, the American experience? and and bring here you answer that i took some shampoos from the hotel <laughs> towels and, you know, uh, they work very different from us it's a very very big big productions there like let's say if i had like one assistant director assistant they have like 10 they close roads and uh, they do it different i think they also, uh, everything, like uh, we have a scene that uh, uh, Shemesh, who is the main character, he, he throw a uh, loof. It's uh, something you eat in the army. You don't eat it. If you eat it, you're, you're dead. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we've been to America and they, and they shot the, the same scene in Canada. And they had like entrecot steak, like, and uh, I said to no, we, we, we'll eat it later because when we we should uh, we eat it afterwards. <laughs> and it was it was made of plastic, so I think it's very different. The, how they do it is very different than us. We are like warriors. We like I, I don't I don't know what's good. I, I know the, I don't know if our way is, is better, but it's a different level even from the bridge. It's. Uh, you need friends to do stuff. You, know, you, you do everything you can just to do something. And uh, in America, you can feel the, it's different. So I can't learn from it. I can't do it here. It's, it's different. It's like doing commercial. The feeling was I'm doing commercials, commercials from time to time. It felt like it. If, if the director wanted to change something, he can't. He needs to ask to NBC, he needs to ask NBC and they talk to the director. It's different. What did you take? I agree that it's difficult to take anything home because it's such a different process. But 
uh, to be honest, I think I was really surprised by the respect for the creative process and and uh, also the quality of the commissioning editors, the channel producers at the channel. There, it's the most fantastic notes I've ever seen, and there is no. I mean, they're really professional, and I, I, I wish I could bring something. I wish I could take my own commissioning editors and send them there for a while. But I mean, it's so the respect for the process is really, and then but then they just have it's another thing they do for an enormous market, and and they and also since they close the show down of the first episode, they it, everything becomes different. But it, I think even though it's it's they deal with bigger budgets. It's always the same problems that there's not enough money and there's not enough time. So, and and they do have um, creative ways to solve that. And the writing room is is uh, um, for me was a very big learning process. Um, when you work with someone like Howard Gordon, every word is questioned 15 times. Every word in every script, um, and the result is is a, a better script. So I think we can all learn from that. Uh, the, the Homeland Experience opened 100 percent of the doors for you, you can do whatever you want right now, but say you choose to work from Israel. You do a pro some projects there, but basically you work and live here. So on honestly, why? <laughs> no, you didn't, I mean. <laughs> he doesn't want me here. Um, no, that's, that's it, it, those big Israeli budgets are keeping me here. Um, yeah, that was a small, really small budget show of 900,000 uh, yeah. euros per episode. And I think, um, first of all, I, I try to work in both places, and I'm, I have projects in, in development in the States that I'm, I'm extremely excited about. Um, but I'm not forgetting that the success of Homeland um, started with the success of Khatufim, and I think that's because of a very local um, and personal story that I wanted to tell. And, and even though I can write in English and, and my English is fine and I understand the American culture, writing in Hebrew is a different experience. It's, it's a lot more personal. Um, and I don't want to give up that experience. And, and shooting a, a film here or a series here with all the hardships is um, fun. It's a Lars, lot of fun. do you think of uh, relocating your company? Well, the thing, I just want to comment on one thing that I, I think that we are talking about earlier today as well, that as we're getting globalized, the local content is becoming more and more important as well. And in, and in Sweden, at least, we don't have American shows on prime time. I th I, as far as I know, I think it's only France right now that do American, sorry? Germany. Yeah, but well, Germany do 50 local crime series to prime time as well, and they have many channels. So I think it's, uh, for us, I think to, to keep the local thing is really important. And, I think that there's no way we should, in planning for success, say that we're, we're aiming for an American show. We should do the local ones and be happy about it. And also, part of, I think, um, our success is not shipping me there, but bringing Homeland here like we did for two seasons, or, or seeing Khatoufim suddenly in the UK and in France and in Australia and in Spain. That's a huge, um, something that I'm the most proud of. So. Uh, or do, do you aim for living there, working there, or something? Of course. <laughs> yes. Of course. I want to do that. So he's honest. Yeah. Uh, yes, I do. That was a sad moment. <laughs> Uh, so before our last issue, I just I, I do want to mention that your partners from Denmark were owned by the government, um, uh, and and they I think they are really um, they're, um, really dedicated to public service broadcaster, and and they became the most efficient factory, one of the most efficient factories, drama factories in the world, and this is for us Israelis. This is a very uh, astonishing um, idea that the government, I mean, in Israel our government uh, network has a budget that is over Keshet and Reshet and Channel 10 together, but is not the most efficient uh, drama factory in the world. So, and, and, and I just want to quote, they have a rule, a really interesting rule that says it's, it's uh, straightforward. We don't do remakes, we don't do adaptations, and writers have the final say. The vision of the writer is the center of attention, right? This is a very exciting one, and it's a government uh, network. So we have a really short time, so just a, a last issue. Um, 
we, we've heard over the last two days some really disturbing things about the future, I mean, about uh, um, the future of our um, field or how uh, uh, a kid on YouTube will make us change. I'm not sure we want to change. But, uh, and, and on the other hand, uh, you both, all of you do a lot of, do films, and, and the film, the independent film is, industry is, uh, is, is uh, shrinking, really, if you don't do uh, uh, superheroes, uh, you want to raise money. So h how do you see the future of our profession? Um, the only thing I can say is that people are never going to get tired of good stories. Um, whether it's a film or a, uh, a TV show, um, I think that's the key. And for at least for us creators, I'm not going to I'm not going to um, invent the next startup in, in finding an innovative solution to, to everything that's going on. But I I can think of a, uh, hopefully I can think of a good story, and, and that's the one I'll tell. So. Lars, do you change the way you tell stories? No, I mean, basically we're content providers, and the things. And, and I think what we do will always be important and, and people like, especially the, the local one. I think uh, the years to come there will be problems with funding and, with in, and it's eroding the, the old methods. But now, I mean, now we have things like Hulu and Netflix paying loads of money. So uh, we don't know how the future is. But I think, I, I honestly think that for, for the scripted TV series, it's, it's looking good. Great. And same as Giddy said, we were looking for a good story and to do it have fun and sell it maybe <laughs> that's what we're so, doing so um, thank you if you haven't seen the bridge uh, I mean we are on episode 8 right now here it's amazing. Uh, on the cable the bridge it's, is amazing. Uh, you can see it on cable it's on VOD, yeah, it's on VOD and, it's, uh, and it's it's an amazing amazing show and thanks for Great show. being here thanks